going to be able to save the Senate? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please be seated. Today, I will sign the Veterans Benefits Improvement and Health Care Authorization Act. And let me start by expressing America's thanks to the members of Congress who played so great a role in passage of this legislation. Senators Denton, Mattingly, Abner, and Murkowski, Congressman Montgomery, Hammerschmidt, McEwen, and let me also recognize the American Legion, the AMVETS, Paralyzed Veterans of America, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and the Disabled American Veterans. We're in Georgia, so taking away from the contributions of anyone else, let me say a few words about Senator Mattingly's determination and hard work and devotion to America's veterans. Mac, I know you're an Air Force veteran yourself, and that you know the sacrifices so many of our veterans have made to keep America free, and I know that you feel as I do that America has a sacred duty to care for those who have borne the battle for their wives and for their children. I also know your quiet kind of leadership. You're more interested in results than headlines, and you don't go around doing a lot of bragging. But you did great work here, and I thought the good folks would like to know that. Thanks, Mac, and thanks to everyone. <laughs> Some of the proudest moments that I've had since becoming president have been when I've met with America's veterans. I spoke to a special group of them just a little more than two years ago at the top of a cliff overlooking a beach in Normandy in France. They were the boys who'd scaled that cliff 40 years before on D-Day as America and its allies began a crusade in Europe. Their story was heroic but not unique. It was the story of millions of Americans who've served in uniform, the story of all of those who've been prepared to make the supreme sacrifice should duty call to protect liberty, to protect democracy, and to protect this blessed land that we call America. Nor was it a new story. It began at Lexington and Concord. And yes, it continues to this very hour. It's the story of Fort McHenry, of San Juan Hill, of the Marne and Guadalcanal, the Chosan Reservoir and Quezon and, and Grenada. It's the story of the spirit of freedom and the battle against tyranny. And part of the pride of every American is that it's the story of American spirit at its finest. Today we honor those who've given us all this legacy of devotion. We honor what they've done and we acknowledge our eternal debt to them. So in closing, let me say to all you veterans who have come here to be part of this moment, I know I speak for all the nation when I say thank you and God bless you. And now I better start writing.
Thank you all again. state and nation was really suffering under a terrible economic burdens, interest from years of neglect by the United States Congress. And overseas, our national honor was under constant attack. You couldn't turn on the television without hearing the Blame America First crowd. Out of patriotism, all you have to do is go down the road a and visit Fort Benning, Georgia, the home of the Grange High School.
Now, just a few days ago, we learned that the figure that represents the country's economic growth, gross national product, GN, in our nation's history. For more than 80% of Americans, it means a top tax rate of 15% or less. And that's why I can't ask. The Democratic leadership in Congress was saying that they wanted to break faith with the American people. Central America. And according to the, the eyes of America are on you in your great state, will you choose the Democratic leader that in 1980 weakened our nation and nearly brought our strong, proud, and free? <laughs> and do you want Nat Mattingly as your senator from the great state? <laughs> My name will never appear on a ballot again, but if you'd like to vote for me one more time, you can do so by But important to you, and especially to you young people, for it'll shape our nation's future. Every... Well, I think if the general were here today, I think the general would say of this generation, of yours, you young people, once again, the best blankety-blank kids in the world. Yeah. Over to you young people, you young Americans, the same freedom and opportunity that our parents and grandparents
go, guy. <laughs>